Well, good morning, and I'm at Bentley Station. It's just past quarter past nine in the morning, and that can only mean one thing. I'm off on a collection today, heading to Exeter, where I'll be collecting a Nissan Navara and driving it back. So let's go. Hopefully it will be a nice, simple day. Well, I've just left Ashvale Station. What I do now is I walk to uh, North Camp Station because uh, it's only about a 10 minute walk between the two. And that kind of counts as a change and I'll get on a train at North Camp that will take me to Reading. Unfortunately, the train was uh, a few minutes late today, so I've got a little less time to make this change uh, than I would usually have. So uh, it's gonna have to be a very brisk walk from Ashvale to North Camp. I've got a train at uh, 9.59 and I think it's almost uh, quarter to, almost quarter to now, so I haven't got long. Well, I got to North Camp Station. As you may be able to see behind me, there's a level crossing here and there's no other way across the track. And uh, so if I get here a bit too late and the barriers are down, you're kind of stuck on the wrong side of the track and you can't necessarily get on the train you need. So luckily that didn't happen. Okay, so my train should be at 9.59, but uh, it's delayed by about eight or 10 minutes. So luckily there's a 20 minute gap or so between trains at Reading. So it shouldn't at the moment be too much of an issue. Unfortunately, when I get to Exeter St David's, I have a six minute change to get on the last train that I need that will take me to a little station uh, to the east of Exeter called Digby and Salton. Generally speaking, I haven't had the best of luck with the uh, GWR trains going west out of uh, Reading recently. It hasn't, I'm afraid, been the most reliable line recently. So a six minute change, Exeter, I somehow think that I'm not going to make that. to board or leave the train when the doors are closing. Well, it's quarter to 11 and I'm at Reading Station and uh, my train is at 11.01. I shall find out if my train is running on time. Well, there we go. That's unfortunate. I was just saying, wasn't I, that the line west out of Reading isn't generally the most reliable and sure enough, my train is 15 minutes late. So yes, uh, I'm obviously 100% not going to make the six minute connection that I'm supposed to get in Exeter. I'm just going to get on the train when, as and when it arrives and we'll just uh, see what happens when we get to Exeter, I guess. Still waiting at Reading. It turns out my 11.01 train is so delayed that it will actually be quicker for me to get the uh, 11.29 train uh, that was supposed to be almost half an hour later and actually makes fewer stops on the way to Exeter. So despite the fact that I have an advance ticket for the 11.01, I'm hoping that they'll let me on the 11.29, considering it will get me there faster. Otherwise, it's going to be a bit of a slow journey, unfortunately.
got here to Exeter St David's. I think the train was on time actually, so uh, once I got on at Reading everything started to go a bit better. So now what's the time? It is 13.16. Yeah, so it's just gone quarter past one. I have a bit of a wait now. I have a train at 1.51 that will only take me for about 10 minutes out to Digby and Southland Station. So since we had about 20 minutes to wait for the train, I thought I'd have a very quick look around Exeter city centre. I don't really know my way around Exeter. I've been through lots of times, but I've never really got to uh, know the city at all. Yeah, there we go. Short and sweet this time. Well hello and as you can see we are behind the wheel of a pickup truck so I look forward to finding somewhere to pull in and give you a proper look round. So the customer as, as you saw was waiting for me at Digby and Selton station just outside Exeter and I've uh, ch checked over the truck and given it a quick test drive and everything's, everything's fine, it's a very nice truck. So uh, yes yeah, so I'm now heading back to the A30 along tiny little Devon roads and then I shall be heading from there to the A303 all the way back to uh, I don't know what I'm going to do now there's nowhere for me to pull in okay. this is the trouble with Devon roads back we go <laughs> Right, so where was I? Yeah, hopefully I won't have to back up again like that. Um, so yeah, heading for the A30, uh, once I get to the end of this road, and an A303, and that will take me all the way back to West Sussex. And here we are, here's what we've collected today. It is a 20, well, I think a 2017, possibly early 2018 on a 67 plate, Nissan Navara, Tecna model. So all the toys, all the bells and whistles, top of the range, 52,000 miles. It's actually a really nice truck, this one. Very nice condition. All ready to go for our journey back. A little bit unusual, but it's got the uh, black colored alloys. I suppose it's personal taste as to whether or not you like those. What do you think? Does it suit the Navara? So I've actually just turned the truck around to show you the inside because the sunlight was actually making it hard to see. Let's start here. Heated seats. Always good. Automatic transmission, my favourite in a pickup truck. Always good. And then down here you've got uh, you've got your selectable four-wheel drive, standard four-wheel drive, and low ratio if you're taking it off-road. Dual zone climate control and air conditioning. We've got sat nav here, touchscreen radio, um, 
and I, I really want to show you this actually one of the posse pieces of the Navara is this superb rear view camera which to be honest you get in other Nissans as well but if I so I'm in the car park here there's no 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 other cars parked here so I can do this safely but you can see how easy it is to maneuver a large vehicle like this with the help of the camera so here's the parking space behind I can clearly see exactly what I'm doing and we are parked perfect very nice that was useful earlier on when I had to reverse down that little country road when someone was coming the other way 52,000 miles cruise control door handle don't know why I'm showing you that the sunlight is so bright I keep needing to spin the vehicle around for every shot I do but anyway I, I've just briefly stopped in Honiton to fill up with petrol and show you around the vehicle uh, but we are now going to be off and heading along the A303 uh, back eastbound hopefully it'll be a nice scenic journey I like the A303 so yes I guess we'll check in again a bit later Well, look at this, how things change. I mean, I think it was just a few minutes ago that I was in the car park in Honiton in bright sunlight, showing you around the truck. Look at it now. Hopefully this won't last the whole journey. So this is the point where the A30 becomes the A303. So the A30 branches off to the right there where those cars are going. Just up ahead is the remains of what used to be an old pub on the corner. If you've driven along the A303 you'll probably know exactly what I mean. It's this building right here which has been closed for, here we go, right on the corner here. I mean, heaven knows how long that's been closed for. It looks like it's been empty for, well, possibly decades, to be honest. But I think many years ago, that used to be a pub. And perhaps it's not, at, despite being on the A303, it's not actually in the best position because it's right on the corner there. I mean, if anyone knows about it, when it's shut, let me know. It'd be interesting to know about the history of that place. Well, we're just past Ilminster and the rain seems to have finally eased off. It was really quite wet going over the Blackdown Hills. There are blue skies ahead. Well, maybe not blue skies, just not thundery grey skies. Well, this is all very new. I'm just passing through some roadworks because they're widening the A303 along here. It's been slow along here for quite a while, but now they seem to have opened up this new stretch of road. A new bridge here. I'm pretty sure I haven't been along here before. This must have only just opened. Well, I've stopped at a pub called The Wagtail, uh, just off the A303 at Wincanton. I have been here before, and the last time I was actually here for a lot longer than I expected because I was in a van that had broken down. 
and I suppose if you're going to break down anywhere a pub car park is pretty much the best place you can possibly break down so I was very lucky but I think it was about 5 36 o'clock kind of time that the uh, van broke down and I was here waiting in the travel lodge let next door to the pub um, at half past midnight waiting for my cab to finally take me home i had to abandon the van in the uh, travel lodge car park with their permission obviously uh, waiting for it to be recovered another day so hopefully this time although i'm very much looking forward to a nice pub meal and something to drink um, a cup of tea obviously not a pint <laughs> i will hopefully be able to leave when i actually want to this time <laughs> Well, it's just gone 5.30, the light has now faded, as you can see. Just had a very nice meal, actually. A um, bit of a leisurely pub meal today. And now I think it is time to head back home. Well, good evening, it's 7.45 and I'm back. It's actually been a remarkably clear journey. I've had a really good run all the way from Wincanton back at home here to West Sussex. So I just wish every journey I did was like that. In the meantime, thank you very much for joining me and I hope that you come along again uh, on another day soon, delivering and collecting vehicles going all across the country for the most attractive.